us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Dear friends, let us continue with the reflections on the introduction to the books of Kings. We have already seen the various backgrounds of the books of Kings. And we were speaking about the sin of Jeroboam. There are four elements there. The institution of the rival temples. The temples begun by Jeroboam in Bethel and Dan in rivalry to the Jerusalem temple and hence they are called the rival temples. Secondly, the golden calf, the idol of Yahweh dedicated there. Thirdly, non-Levitical priests. And fourthly, parallel feast established by him. And by this, he was able to restrain the people of Israel from going to Jerusalem. Therefore, in one way, Jeroboam's plan succeeded. But it had terrible, terrible aftermaths or consequences. And Bible always will call Jeroboam as the beginner of idolatrous worship. And we often find a, uh, a phrase, the sin of Jeroboam, son of Nebath, which he caused Israel to sin. And therefore we find Jeroboam caused Israel to commit the sin of idolatry. He compelled everyone to do idolatry. And that is the great sin committed by Jeroboam. And still other problems arise together with it. We should also remember that the calf or the cow, sorry, the bull represented God Baal of Canaanites. They had their gods Baal and Asherah. And Baal is represented by the bull or the calf. And hence, when the people were worshipping Yahweh in the form of the idol of calf, there was no, no great problem in the beginning except that it was idolatry. But after some time, maybe some 20, 20 years, 25 years later, when a new generation came up, they began to see Baal in the golden calf and not Yahweh. And hence, they began to worship Baal in the place of Yahweh. And thus, Baal worship spread throughout the country. 
and another consequence was this they began to make the shrine in other hill tops too or on hill tops too and there we find dan and bethel were made by jerobowa in every town the people began to build shrines on the hill tops and set up the idol of yave of course here it is the calf and they began to worship yave in their own places as i said about the temples of bethel and dan these centers also became centers of worship of baal after maybe 20 25 years when a new generation came up and thus we find the centers of the worship of baal becomes or became now the centers the centers of the sorry the centers of the worship of yahweh becomes now the centers of worship of baal and thus we find two more consequences of the evil or the sin committed by jerobowam one people as they called began to worship baal in the place of yahweh and secondly people began to worship god in their own area and they built small small shrines on the hill tops and in the bible it will be called the hill top shrines and therefore we find the sin of jeroboam had these two impacts in the life of the people and they all gradually became worshippers of baal and ashara a terrible effect of the sin begun by jeroboam and hence the sin of jeroboam made the people made all the people we can say worshippers of baal and worshippers of idols okay therefore this is the way how we can understand about the religious background and when baal worship eros naturally we find the pious people who were eager to worship yahweh had no opportunity for the same and there was a great tension between baal religion and yahweh religion and this situation prevailed for almost a century and there we find okay we can see around 925 the kingdom was divided into two and jeroboam became the ruler in the northern kingdom israel and hence we can see the kingdom of north he embraced baal religion and also yavistic religion thus a tension between the two eros in a way we can say and the worship of baal spread further and it became worse around 850 BC during the time of king Ahab and queen Jezebel at the time of king Ahab he married the princess of Syrophoenicia Jezebel in Syrophoenicia they worship 
Baal and Asherah. And that was their religion. And when the princes came to Israel in Samaria, Samaria is the capital then of Israel. When she came to Samaria, she brought with her 400 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of Asherah. And thus we see so many people began to accept Baal religion as their official religion. Therefore, the idol worship started by Jeroboam now becomes apostasy, a total apostasy of the nation Israel. And they were worshipping Baal and Asherah. And almost all the people went after these gods. Yavism or worship of Yahweh was almost forgotten. And that is the image given by Prophet Elijah. And we find God sent Prophet Elijah around 850 to King Ahab to make him come back. But Ahab was not willing. And now what happens? We find Elijah wants to restore monotheism or Yavism. And he began to take steps for the renewal of Yavistic religion. And with the permission of God, of course, we have to understand. We find the people were punished by him with a famine that lasted for three years. And in chapter 17 of First Kings, we read the story. From this moment onwards, there will be no rain or dew in Israel except through my words. And thus we find the severe famine year arose and then the king became angry with Elijah and he wanted to do away with him. And now Elijah concentrates on the people. He wants to bring them back to Yavism. And hence we find Elijah conducting the famous contest in Mount Carmel on Mount Carmel. And there we find he was challenging the prophets of Baal and Ashara. And he established that Yahweh is the only God and Baal and Asherah are not really gods. They are made of wood, stone and clay and that is the work of human hands and hence he taught them saying they cannot save you and hence do not go after them. And that is the way how he made the Yahweh worship once again strong among the people. And we find in the famous contest on Mount Carmel 
Elijah won the bet. And the bet, of course, was the God who answers with the fire from above and burns the sacrificial victim will be considered the true God. And Elijah established that Yahweh is the true God. And then he asked the people to catch hold of all the prophets of Baal and Asherah and kill them. And when they all were killed, the Queen Jezebel happens to hear about it. And she got wild. And she took an oath instantly. And according to the oath, she said, I will make the life of the one who killed the prophets of Baal and Asherah similar to those who are killed. In other words, within 24 hours, he will be killed. And hearing of this, Elijah tried to escape from there. He went to Mount Horeb and took refuge. And that's a story that we will find in the book of, Jed, book of the Kings. And even though Elijah tried his best, we will find again, okay, for the time being, Yavism was restored. But later, Yavism still began to grow. And thus, we find the people went after other gods and for which Yahweh was very angry towards them. Besides, we find the people of Israel and also Judah, they became very affluent by around 800 BC when the Syrian kingdom and the Assyrian kingdom declined. And Egypt was not very powerful. And at that time, the people of Samaria, they began to make use of the given opportunity. They captured some of the vassal kingdoms of Assyria and Syria. And thus receiving annual tribute from them, he became and the nation became very, very rich. And of course we know when the riches grow in a country, there will be simultaneously the growth of poverty too. The rich will be richer and the poor will be poorer. That is the common phenomenon seen. And hence we can say Elijah now sorry, Elijah's time is over. Israel is now under the grip of social injustice. And we know when Social injustice grow. The rich becomes richer, the poor becomes poorer. And the poor one's rights will be practically neglected or trampled over. And they have nobody to approach. And now God sends to console these people and to give also a warning to the people of Israel. And these prophets are Prophet Amos and Prophet Hosea. They did their ministry in the north. And when 
they took up the ministry. Naturally, we find they found fault with the rulers of Israel and they were condemned and they were punished. And this punishment was imposed on them by the prophet. And when the people were not ready to accept the warnings given by the prophet, the inevitable occurs. And around the ministry of, sorry, around uh, the 760, the ministry of Amos began. And after 10 or 20 years, the ministry of Hosea began. And the people, they began to expect something from the rulers of the nation and also the religious leaders. But they were not able to save the people. And according to the warnings given by the prophets, the people were taken in exile in 722 from Samaria to Babylon or we can say to Assur and to the capital of Assyria. Nineveh becomes the capital later. Okay. And the people were taken to Nineveh as practically slaves. It happens in 722. Thus we find God's words come to be fulfilled and now the people of Israel is no more because they did not heed their ears or heed attention to the prophets by prophets of to the prophets Amos and Hosea. Okay. When the prophet spoke the words of warning, the people thought these prophets are not really authorized by Yahweh to proclaim such words of condemnation. And therefore, they disregarded the prophets and their words. They thought that the prophets are speaking on their own. And they were speaking in this way in order to get name and fame. But actually that was not the way. But the people could not understand it. And hence we see they were able to practically uh, disown and disrespect the prophets and their words. And this is what happened to Prophet Amos and Hosea. But their words became true and Israel became destroyed as foretold by the prophets. And now we find on the other side the kings of Judah. They are ruling and they are the descendants of David. And when they are ruling, we find the situation in Judah also was almost the same. We can summarize it in this way. There were four sins attributed by the prophets against the kingdom of Samaria, the northern kingdom. And there were five sins attributed against Judah or against Jerusalem. And what are the sins attributed to Samaria? And we can see 
the prophets found fault with their apostasy idolatry religious syncretism and fourthly the social injustice therefore these four sins were attributed or leveled against samaria or the northern kingdom israel and we know the meaning of all this apostasy means forsaking yahweh accepting other gods especially here baal and ashera then idolatry would mean worship yahweh or any other god in the form of idol and thirdly we find the sins of social injustice okay before that we can say of religious syncretism religious syncretism would mean the people accepted yahweh on one hand and worshiped him and worship baal and ashera on the other they accepted both gods or it is just like saying okay some people they go to the church to worship god on sundays and they also go to the temples to worship the deities there when somebody does that usually they are called by the people called as religious syncretists or who follow religious syncretism that is accepting different religions at the same time and that is the third sin level against samaria and the fourth sin level against samaria was this social injustice it was very severe acute and four sins accused against samaria by the prophets especially amos and hosea okay now we find in the southern kingdom judah things were not better for them almost the same happened here they also had all these four sins first of all the sin of idolatry second sin of apostasy third sin of religious incretism sorry syncretism and fourth the social injustice all the four sins are leveled against judah also but now we find one more serious sin is leveled against them and that is false hope or vain hope in the promise of god vain hope in the temple of jerusalem in other words we can say and what's the meaning of that the people of judah thought that since god is living with them no power will come to attack them and conquer them and besides they thought that the people they were following or they were falling a prey to these four sins as they liked but there was also a fifth sin leveled against judah and that would be almost we can say it is the sin of fal- false hope as i said that is whatever i do since god is in our midst nothing will happen to us that is what they thought and therefore they were thinking that 
Yahweh would safeguard them, protect them, even if they commit very serious sins. And that is the way things went on. Thus, against Judah, five sins were attributed by the prophets. And especially we find prophet Isaiah and prophet Micah. They accused Judah of these kinds of sins. And they said, unless they repent and return to Yahweh, they will be destroyed. When the prophets proclaimed these words of condemnation, they were not worried much. They, like the people of Israel, thought that the prophets spoke all this to get name and fame. Not that God wanted them to say like it. And not only that, they doubted whether it is from Yahweh because of another reason. How can Yahweh speak against his own temple, his own city? And therefore they thought that this is just blasphemy. But Prophet Micah, he repeatedly warned them. And when the people of Israel went into slavery, it was a great shock for the people of Judah. They began to think now, the words spoken by the prophets are true. And they began to amend their lives. And thus we find King Hezekiah with the support of Prophet Isaiah renewed the religion the reforms of Hezekiah show that. And he re-established Yahvism in its purity, we can say. But after his time, we find Manasseh becomes the king. He was really against the Yahvistic religion, we can think, because he destroyed all that is related to Yavistic religion and according to the Bible he was the most evil king of Judah or the evilest king in Judah and therefore we find Manasseh destroying everything related to the temple and so on and this king Manasseh really paved way for the destruction of Judah because during his time God sent a prophet, a man of God to inform him or to give him warning that Judah will be destroyed but he did not take care. Okay, we will continue with this discussion in the next session and until then Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift and love of your sacred word. Open our hearts to put into practice that which you have revealed to us through your word. Amen.